create in me a clean heart, O God. We adore you, Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. On this fourth Sunday of Lent, we are fed on this wonderful story of the prodigal son, in which we encounter uh, the Father's love, the unconditional love of the Father. Actually, as Jesus narrates this story, he has many episodes, many lessons, but central among them is this love of the Father, a God who still loves us before we sin, during our stubbornness and sinfulness, and even after, and still awaits our return. And we hear that when the prodigal son decided to make his way back, the father ran to encounter him. You can see that wonderful image of Pinterest, that the father is open with open arms. Let us pray that at, by this time of Advent, we have begun to discover how far away we had walked from the Lord, how we had chosen to use whatever we have for our own selfish interests instead of serving God's purposes where we thought we could do it on our own it's a time to reconcile so it's a story about reconciliation and like this son we ought to have found out that it should be with the father we are safer in the hands of the father we pray for that grace the first reading gives us another encounter, kind of reconciliation. That finally, these people who have been in the, in the wilderness, spent 40 years in the wilderness. They are going to taste the first fruits from their, from their new land, from the promised land. You can imagine the joy. After 40 years of wandering in the desert, and behind the 40 years, there were so many years in the wilderness, in, the, in Egypt, suffering and pain. And hear what the Lord says. I have taken away the shame of Egypt from you today. Let that be our prayer. Lord, let us hear those words from you. The pain, the suffering, the hardships, the worries and the fears. Let us hear those words from you, Lord. And actually wants to speak those words to us. But, but, you have to be willing to walk the, 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 through the wilderness such that he can, you know, uh, fulfill his pledge as we also walk our walk. So, that's the challenge it throws to us on this fourth Sunday of Lent. And the good news is that uh, regardless of who doesn't want us to be blessed by the Lord, we shall be blessed anyway. That's why as the gospel begins, Luke chapter 15 verses 1, we hear of uh, these uh, tax collectors and sinners moving to Jesus, and then the Pharisees and scribes are complaining. Look at the dead ones going to the, to, to the Holy One. Yeah, perhaps... Some of us, some people could be discouraged by now. Like, how will I go back to church after this so many years? How do I start over? How do I reconcile? No, just make that step. If the Lord is dropping it in your heart right now, just make a step. If you feel you've come back to your senses, as we hear that this prodigal son did, just, just decide to walk back. And as you walk back, remember like the prodigal son, he goes back without any sense of entitlement. Remember, he walked away with a sense of entitlement, but he walks back without, he's like, okay, dad, I'll tell daddy, the Lord, um, uh, I'm not worthy anymore to be called your servant, your son. Treat me as one of the servants. And that's what sin reduces us into. It changes our position from son, son is sheep, a child to that lower position but repentance turns the scores 
from that slave situation to once again into the sonship, into a beloved child of God. You know, this first reading, yes, Joshua and his team are now living in the promised land. They have settled in and now begin to taste the fruit of that land. Yes, indeed, God is a, our God is a provident and faithful God. He fed them on manna as long as they needed it, even into the promised land. Isn't that beautiful? That God's, God knows the details. He knows when to, to give you a hand. He knows when to uphold you, when you cannot survive on your own. He knows and will find a way. So actually, times like this when there are so many worries, people recovering from COVID, the world recovering from COVID, fears of war here and there, so much pain and suffering here and there, the Lord knows how to sustain us in all these times. We only have to trust Him, not to give in to worry. Surely the whole journey through the wilderness was dramatic, scary and worrisome. And indeed some endured, others complained, while others gave up. And those who gave up, we had, he decided that, okay, since you don't trust anymore, you don't believe anymore, fine. You don't get to the promised land. Because that's what fear and doubt says, that you don't believe that you can get there. Then it's like, okay, let it be done according to what you believe. Where is your faith? So is life. Some will choose to keep moving forward gratefully. Others will continuously grumble while others will give up on the way. However, we are encouraged to take on the attitude like that of the team that made it to the promised land. Joshua, Caleb, and those who are about their age, below their age, because apparently most of those above their age had died in the desert. We are encouraged to take on that right attitude. To trust the Lord always through the storm. Trust the Lord through the winds. Trust the Lord through the wilderness. Trust the Lord through the fire. You know, uh, and having learned to trust the Lord and sought communion with Him, we are encouraged to be ambassadors of the Lord. And the message we are supposed to carry to the whole world is this. Be reconciled to God. You know why it's so important? Uh, first and foremost, with Zirion, so many multitudes of people who are estranged from God, with growing atheism, uh, with increasing agnosticism, increasing secularism, great fear, and all other forms of uh, ungodly attitudes and ungodly legislations. We are invited to be the voice that reminds others of the values, relevance, and importance of developing and keeping a living relationship with the Lord. That's why the Lord wants us to be His ambassadors. That's the position He's inviting us into. That having repented, having returned to Him, let us go and invite our fellow sinners. Tell them about this loving God. God who never condemns, but welcomes us, even in our sinful state, and is willing to restore us. Many times people make whatever choices they make with the hope of finding peace or averting evil. And the Lord already reveals the key to peace and aversion of evil. It's turning to Him, who is the source and fountain of mercy. Uh, I think this Polish girl, Sister Faustina, well known as Sister Faustina, received that beautiful message which we ought to take in carefully and seriously in the diary 10 uh, 1074 jesus says tell aching mankind to snuggle close to my merciful heart and i and i will fill it with peace sometimes we want to use all other means and forms of finding what we want but the lord already assured us Surely peace is not it what everything everyone wants. We need peace of heart. We want peace of mind. We want peace in the family. We want peace in the world. Yes. And Jesus already assured us, Daily 300, mankind will not have peace until it turns with trust to my mercy. 
And to enjoy that peace, the journey begins with the reconciling with God. That's the sacrament of uh, penance. Perhaps some people don't know how to find this peace. And they need to hear from you. That's what he, why he's inviting you and I to become his ambassadors. Will you help Jesus to spread that word? Will you become an agent of reconciliation? Perhaps a few ideas on how to become an ambassador of this reconciliation with God. One, begin working towards peace in our own hearts through confession. Then extend that peace to our families through prayer, love, and forgiveness as a family and building a strong and God-fearing families. Then we can support or get involved in works of evangelization. And after we've been, you know, uh, away from the Lord, as the prodigal son was, after we've committed a good number of sins, one can wonder, will really God forgive me? Will God maybe just reject me? Is there hope for me still? In the gospel, Jesus vividly <laughs> reveals to us the mind and attitude of God towards us. God does not condemn us when we decide to return to him. Let us see how the father deals with the prodigal son again. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him, was filled with compassion, and father ran and embraced him and kissed him. You know, just take a moment. Can you envision God running towards you and embracing you? Maybe you need to take a moment today. Sit down and envision. It's a prayer of imagination. Make that prayer of imagination. See Jesus running, God running towards you and embracing you. Tell him what you want. Touch him. Ask him to touch you. Ask him to embrace you. As the son actually rehearsed his words of apology, the father was so much focused on expressing his love. Just to remind us that no amount of sin, uh, uh, can ex no amount of sin that we commit can exclude us from the love and grace of God. It's only our decision to remain far from Him and our decision not to repent that uh, blocks this uh, relationship, renewed relationship with our God. The Father, thereafter orders, let there be a feast. Have your sandals. You see the boy, the boy is barefooted. Have your sandals back. Have the ring. Yes, all this means something. Ring is a reminder you still belong to me. It's a sign of belonging. You belong to me. In that culture, they used to have two rings of the family. And there's a family name. His father's like, you belong to me. Sealed, confirmed and sealed. Don't doubt it again. Sandals, you're not a slave. You are a son. You're a beloved child of God. And then let's party. Let me express, show you my joy. How do you treat those who have hurt you? How do you assure them that all is well, once again, that we can start over? Or you keep reminding them the evil they did to you? You want to keep them, you know, uh, so subdued. The Father shows us a, a, a different attitude. If you're forgiven, forgive completely and go to the point, seek reconciliation with them. Yeah. Uh, so, the shock is for this boy. God still, daddy still loves me. What will hinder or block a relationship with God? It's unconfessed sin, poor communication or lack of prayer, uh, excessive worry and forgiveness, lack of faith, lack of love and disregard for others, disobedience, complaining, holding on to idols, and being too critical of others. You see the attitude of this boy, the elder brother? Your son has come back and then for us you've never given us anything. We've been slaving for you. My friend, you're not slaving for God. No. Actually, with that attitude that you're slaving for God, working so hard to please God, you have it wrong. You are so, your heart is so far away from Him. Let us pray that we may once again uh, rediscover that amazing love of God, renew our relationship with the Father, and find the courage and strength to turn to Him. Amen. Shalom.